Hey everyone, Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, and I'm so excited to be back with a brand new episode. Today's guest is none other than Mark Hell of Mark's Garden. Mark is the definition of an icon. He has been around in the area of floral design since the beginning, and Mark is one of just a handful of people who has truly innovated. I was so excited to sit with him. I don't think he does a whole lot of interviews, so it was really, really exciting to think of sitting down for a long-form conversation. And I want to mention that I did record this last November, so when he refers to his work with the upcoming Oscars, Government Ball, some other events, just keep in mind this was recorded last November. And so uh, Mark has done the Governor's Ball for 24 years straight. Really incredible. And you're going to hear so much about his process for designing for the Oscars, also about how he feels about working with his life and business partner. And you're going to hear how he views innovation. And again, he is one of the innovators, so it's really fascinating. And also how he prepares for potential, as he calls it, disasters. Also working with celebrities, specifically Jessica Simpson, and how he views the concept of pressure and so much more. I want to also urge all of you to listen to our follow-on segment, The Next Level, in which my co-host, Melissa Fancy, and I tease out some of the highlights of the conversation with Mark and help deliver them in a way that you can use to apply directly to your business and even to your own life. So enjoy my conversation with Mark Held. So Mark, I've heard so much about you and your company, Mark's Garden. You and your floral design team have created stunning designs for a host of weddings, including a long list of celebrity clients such as Fergie, Ellen DeGeneres, Pink, Gwen Stefani, Heidi Klum, Jennifer Lopez, Jessica Simpson, and Adam Sandler, to mention only a few. You've also designed for prestigious events, including the Academy Awards Governor's Ball for the past 22 years, which is the official after party of the Academy Awards that's just bursting at the seams with past and present Oscar winners. You designed for television Emmy Awards, Golden Globe Awards. You've received extensive media coverage. You authored a book called Fabulous Parties. Like, what are you thinking, Mark, when I list out like this small portion of your accomplishments? It doesn't sound that bad, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I think you've done okay. Well, you know, I'm always involved in the day I'm in and what's going on this next weekend. So I never think of all that stuff. But if you actually write it all down, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it, it's incredible. So I'm curious how this all started for you. I'm like, are you from this area originally? Actually, I was born in Chicago, and I, I've grown up mainly in California. I uh, lived in Northern California for a long time, and also Southern California, too. Mm -hmm. So most of my childhood was on the West Coast. What did your parents do? My dad was a preacher, oh, and really? so I grew up as a PK preacher's kid. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were always the bad boys. What? <laughs> yeah, were you, I would think that you probably just wanted to rebel, right? I mean, was it kind of like that for you? No, not not really. I wasn't. I don't think I was a particularly rebellious kid. No, I don't think so. I, I didn't mind you didn't mind. being were, a preacher's kid. It was fine with me. Were you personally very religious? No, not particularly. I mean, yeah. I did grow up in the church and I went to church every Sunday and I was involved in uh, church activities, which I think was a good, a good thing for me. Yeah. You know? How so, so? Why was it so good for you? Well, I think it's good to have some kind of background in the church or something similar to that. I think it doesn't hurt us. You know, it's kind of out of fashion today and I don't go to church yeah. anymore, but I think it doesn't hurt to have a background. Well, so what were you like during high school? I mean, was any of this passion that you have now for floral design apparent manifesting at any point when you were growing up? Did you notice in particular flowers and colors and I was not involved in flowers as a, as an adolescent at all, really. I mean, here and there, perhaps. I mean, I, mean, I remember one time um, as a kid going to camp, you know, where my job was to do the centerpieces for the, for the tables oh, at, for, camp? at camp. So I went out in the, in the woods and created some and collected some beautiful, beautiful vines. They were, they were really gorgeous, sort of green with a, had a kind of a reddish hue on them. Uh -huh. And I did all the tables. And uh, of course it turned out to be poison ivy. Oh, come on. But, Are you kidding me? <laughs> but that was probably my first experience 
designing. Yeah. That's interesting. Like, do you remember, I mean, did it really, were you just assigned it or did you volunteer for this particular? I don't remember. Yeah. I, 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 I a long know. time ago. A long time ago. But it's interesting right. that, that, that happened in camp. It, you know, I, it's interesting. I hear people's stories about, it's almost the serendipity of what happens, you know, when they're really young, that's, that has some kind of an influence on who they are today or some kind of a spark that started back then. No, I don't think so. No, not, not really. No, not, not, Specifically with flowers. Yeah. Well, so what happened? Did you go to college? I went to college for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wh- which one? I went to the University of Redlands, which is actually, uh, it's not far from here. It's- what did you major in when you were going to college? Mm, I didn't major in anything. Just liberal arts. Mm-hmm. So when did this then start for you? What did you do when you came out of college? What job did you get or what did you do? Well, it's it's a it's a long and complicated story. Oh, good. Oh, really? Okay. Well, <laughs> no, I went to school for a couple of years, and um, I think that was a great experience for me. I really enjoyed it. I think I learned a lot. Uh-huh. I'm really glad I did that. Uh, and then after that, I, deci- I totally decided to switch directions, hmm. and um, so I kind of. Um, decided, well, I'm going to go move to Boston and I'm going to uh, go to the Boston Conservatory of Music. Oh. And so I went there for a while to study dance. Huh. And um, so I was there for a while and then I became a, 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 a professional ballet dancer. So I did that for a number of years, uh, dancing, you know, kind of all over. And it, w- it wasn't until I finished that that I decided to go into Flowers. Yeah, because from what I understand, I know very little about it, but especially in ballet. And I wish I could remember the name. Uh, Sergio is a Russian uh, ballet dancer that there was a documentary on, very edgy kind of a guy who was okay. supposed to be one of the greatest in the world. And it was fascinating to see this documentary recently. Hmm. But uh, obviously, as you know, uh, at, you retire at a young age. It's true. I mean, mm-hmm. I can't imagine. I mean, if you really love this, you're performing, you're really passionate about it. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine facing, you know, when you come to the end of it and you're like, whatever, 28 right, or right, something, right. like, what am I going to do next? Mm-hmm. Was that hard for you? Or like, w- 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 do you remember what that was like? Mm, I think it was not super hard. I mean, you go from one thing to the next in life, I've always felt. I had a great time doing what I, uh, when I was dancing, I yeah. met wonderful people. And I think that um, it also was a a great experience for me and also um, taught me a lot uh, uh, for what I'm doing now. It doesn't seem like it would relate, but I think it really does. I think the theater, um, what I do is can be very theatrical. Mm -hmm. So for events and weddings and things like that, I think uh, some experience with theater is um, important. So when you were performing yeah. in the theater, were you, were you also traveling a lot? I mean, was that Some, kind yeah. of experience mm-hmm. as well? Mm-hmm. So when you were coming to the end of that career, had you even were you even aware that floral design was a potential career? No, actually, you know, I was one of those uh, people that just kind of stumbles into their job. Oh, yeah. It's not like the first time I saw a flower, I I just flipped. Yeah, I got. Uh, I, I needed a job and I got a job in a flower shop and uh, I was working as a salesperson. Yeah. And I did that for a while. I picked up design as I went along and I had a talent for it. So it was, um, that's kind of the way I got into the business. You know, a lot of young people now, uh, they don't know what they want to do and they can't decide what they want to want to do. And I, I didn't know either at that point. So for me, at least it was just one thing led to another. You know, you got to eat. You have to have a job. You know, it's interesting. It sounds to me like for you, your path just kind of unfolded before you. And rather than have all this angst and everything, it's interesting that the way you're made up, your character, your personality Mm -hmm. is that that's okay. And just to embrace it. I mean, that's tough for a lot of people. How do you mean? Well, I remember for myself, I mean, I always loved, loved music, but I couldn't figure out. I was a trumpet player. I couldn't Mm -hmm. figure out how I was going to make a living at it after right. uh, school. 
And I'm thinking, if I mean, for me, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? And I started to get into business and I was always angsting that I'm not being creative. And then I started to see the creativity within business. I mean, one thing I want to get to eventually with you is that you've built a very successful business. So there is also clearly a business acumen with you. And I've had some people you know, on this show say to me that they view business as a creative act. Like, especially the ones who have these really major businesses. They're the ones who every one of them has said to me, when I say, how do you balance creative art with business? That, you know, the old cliche in a sense. And a lot of the answers I get is, well, I viewed creating the business structure as a creative act. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does, does that resonate with you? Not exactly like that. I, you know, I think that, uh, it's great if you can think of it that way. I know a lot of people that feel the way you have you felt also that they wanted to be a creative person but they they didn't want to go to business school or they didn't yeah. want to or deal with that the finances deal, yeah, all of right it. but um as we all find out or most of us find out mm -hmm. um you know maybe being a creative person you know you, it's hard to raise a family sometimes mm -hmm. or to have um you know maybe you want a little bit to live a little more comfortably. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really a tough trade-off. Um, for me, the business side, um, it is a trade-off also because it's, um, the longer you are in business, the more time you spend with business-related elements. Mm -hmm. uh, I spend a lot of time dealing with personnel and business things, which I would rather not do, but yeah. that's just part of it. But then on the other hand, obviously, again, you're doing so well, you figured it out. Well, I... Or do you feel like you even fell into that, <laughs> Get, getting the right people? I, I don't know. I think I maybe... I'm kind of logical, a logical person, and uh -huh. I... And I um, Maybe I have some business sense. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe just natural. Well, so you're at the flower shop. You're, you said you're starting to pick up on design. You mm -hmm. seem to intuitively be pretty natural at it, pretty talented uh, at it. What, where was that transition point of the switch where you're now going to start your own business? How did that go for you? It wasn't clean and easy like that. I mean, I was working in a shop for a while. It happened to be, I was in Europe. Actually, it was in Germany out that I worked for, you know, in a flower shop there for a while. Then I came back to the States and I did uh, some dancing here and there also. So there was a little bit of a renaissance of that, uh, of that job. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I started doing the flowers again. I worked for a number of people and eventually uh, started my own shop. And, and people just started to call you for weddings. Like, how, if if you could tell me maybe about your first wedding and how that came about, if you remember that. God, I don't remember. That. <laughs> I couldn't tell you about my last wedding. Really. <laughs> uh, no, I don't remember particularly about a first wedding. I remember that when uh, my partner and I, Richard, started uh, the shop, we uh, we figured we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, we had a little bit of money. We thought, well, we'll. We'll give it a whirl and see what happens. And, you know, if we go broke, we go broke. So um, that's kind of, we went into it with that sort of a frame of mind. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Uh, we'll see what happens. And we sort of picked a point of view of what we wanted to project as a flower shop, which was at that time we wanted to um, sort of, we had this idea of mixing fruit and flowers and uh which was kind of not done so much in those days so um that was how we started out that caught on and um uh word got around we were very very lucky so with richard um you know taking on a partner is a whole nother thing what why did you decide to do that i mean i can make assumptions but i'm curious from your perspective why why did you take on a partner is this a business partner or is this also a a, a romantic partner that you already had i don't oh, know if i'm clear oh. mm -hmm. see that that presents a whole nother uh that's tough isn't that or why? i guess for you see i expected you <laughs> would say that i mean to work with the person who you also love live with mm -hmm. That seems really well. That is a little. It. It. I can see how it could be 
difficult. Yeah, because you're spending so much time yeah. together. Right. It's true. How do you separate it out? Or again, with you, it's just kind of flowed and it was all fine. Well, you know, in the beginning, Richard was the person that wanted, that actually sort of pushed me into it. I didn't really want to start a business. So he said, oh, yeah, I think you got to do it. So I said, okay, but you got to help me out at least till we see what's going on here. So it wasn't supposed to be a permanent thing, but it ended up being relatively permanent. He's retired now, but in general, we were working 14, 16, 18 hours a day for a lot of days in the beginning. I would get up at 2 a.m., go down, buy the flowers, and we would work until seven at night. So yeah. Um, it was a it was a lot of work in the beginning, but we we were enjoying it because we were um, making something work. Hmm. You know, I also know I know Mark that I mean you are considered a major innovator in this field. You know, in floral design, and I'm 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 almost imagining what you're going to say when I ask this. But where do you think that? comes from i mean i don't even know if it's really definable it's almost like i mean in my opinion when i'm meeting so many great innovators at what they do um i have another show too where i'm mean, pro surfers and musicians and all kinds it seems that an innovative spirit there's no like work to it right it's just kind of there you just think this is what you do and it turns out it might be something no one's ever done before like when you came up with the idea of fruit and flowers do you remember, like, was there some spark, like, oh my God, fruit and flowers? Or was it just like, well, why wouldn't I do this? It was kind of like, I think I should do this. And I think people are going to like it. For me, I think that things come from the materials that you use to a large degree. That's why I always went to the market myself, because I wanted to pick the flowers. So that would be an inspiration when you go down, you see, you see something new, you see something unique, and you want to have it, you want to work with it, you want to incorporate that, and you want to show it to people, and you want to introduce them to new things. And I think that that's really important. There was a time here, especially in the United States, where all people could think of when they saw a flower arrangement was how long is it going to last? Hmm. How many days am I going to get get out of that? Is it going to be five days, seven days, 14 days? Ridiculous, of yeah. course. But that was always the question. And our answer was always, it doesn't matter. Yeah, You know, it's beautiful. And so it was kind of like, we never answered that question. We always said, we think it's more important to use these flowers that may not last that long, but that are unique mm. and different and exciting, and you're going to love them. Kind of transition into another place here. You said, I can't imagine an Oscar ball without flowers. Flowers breathe the life into the decor and add the final beautiful and fragrant touch. Can you say more about that? Well, I think that's very true. You know, you can't have a wedding without flowers. You can't have a Thanksgiving dinner without flowers. It's an odd thing that we do celebrate all of our holidays and all of our celebrations and the flowers are always included. Mm -hmm. I mean, a wedding without flowers would be kind of absurd. And so the room, if you walk into a room without flowers on the table, it doesn't have an immediacy. The flowers, I think partly because they don't last. It's an extravagance that just an immediacy because it's something that goes there in the last minute. It's the final touch. That and lighting the candles create the atmosphere. Mm. I also read that design meetings start six months before the actual ball. And I'm curious if you wouldn't mind talking about your process for preparing for the Oscars, uh, the governor's ball. If you could, yeah, if you could tell me about your process, that would be interesting. Well, I can tell you that we've already started on this year's. Uh, we have been going back and forth. I've been going back and forth with the event producer, Shel Chiquetto of Sequoia Productions. And I have a meeting coming up when we're going to, you know, work on kind of more design options. We know the general direction that we're going to go this year. I can't really talk about that. Oh, at this I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I will say that it's very unique. It's very different this year and it's very uh, environmentally friendly, mm. which is great. I think it's really something that we're doing more of this year, which will be very interesting. But yeah, usually uh, we meet about six months ahead and there's always a, a ball chairman. The academy has a ball chairman. It's usually the chairman that has the 
general idea of where they want to go with the ball. If they want to do, you know, Louis the 16th, or if they want to do a very modern, or they want to do club, or they want to do uh, whatever. They sort of get to pick the style of the ball, and then we work to figure it out. Now, when you're told this information, mm -hmm. do you have a particular process for how you then come up with your own inspiration for it and what your idea is going to be? Do you have some, I mean, you've done this for 22, 23 years. I think this will be 24, actually. Wow. Maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's kind of like we're just trying to make something really great and original and different and new and trying to if somebody gives me an idea mm -hmm. of where they it's just a little incremental idea mm -hmm. then um it's it's great for me because we can like go back and forth and and i can work on developing that idea i mean i know what the materials are that i will have to use yeah and I'll try to come up with some ideas that I think would be unique and different. Now, I might be asking a naive question here, but as a layman, when you're told that you know you, you have the materials that you are to use, what, what does that mean, the materials, as related to floral design? Well, I know that it's going to be flowers mainly. Yeah. Usually. It's usually flowers. But sometimes it's other stuff, too. Oh. I mean, you know, somebody may want to incorporate wood elements or something. Oh, I may see. Wanna, I got it. Wanna, or if they say, oh, we were gonna want, this year we want to do a Napa look, which uh -huh. is a little more rustic. Mm. Or or I have to do something. I want walls of, of succulents and flowers. Mm. And that's a, that's a great thing to go. Or, mm -hmm. or uh, sometimes it can be as simple as color. I want to do purple this year and I just, you know, so I want everything to be purple. So you start thinking purple calories and purple dahlias and purple this and that, or, or I want it to be a one flower look, or we want to do uh, art deco. So that's going to be orchids, maybe calla lilies, mm. that kind of yeah. thing. So if they come up with a, um, a, a starting point, then you can start thinking about it. Can you tell me about one of your favorite ones? I mean, this is going to be your 24th. Like mm -hmm. about you personally, when you look back and you think, wow, that one in 2000, blah, blah, blah. Uh, can you tell me about one? You know, I never think that way. I'm always thinking and I, I never think back about about Oscars or other events. I mean, if somebody says, oh, uh, you know, we need some pictures or something, I'll have to find something. But I'm really only interested in the next Oscars the next event. I mean, I had a huge party uh, Saturday night for 350 people. It was an amazing party. That was Saturday. Now I'm, I'm worried about mm. working on uh, events for this weekend. And I've got a couple of very interesting events. I don't really think about this stuff that's already happened. And sometimes if I'm looking for pictures, I'm, you know, in my iPad, I'll have to go through all those things. And I prefer to look forward. Yeah. You know, it's interesting though. You've been doing this so much. You know, for you, this is it's another one. But I'm wondering if you have a moment when you're in there and all these amazing, you know, all these, uh, let's say celebrities, they're all in the room, the room's packed and it's the Oscars and mm -hmm. this is your work. Mm -hmm. And as you talked about earlier, it breathes life into the event. Mm -hmm. Do you have a moment where you just stand there and you look around and take it in? Yeah, that is true. I mean, there, there are some times when, uh, you know, because... I always try to do my best on the Oscars and events, but you know, every now and then something is really good. Yeah. And then you have to say, this is great. Yeah. So earlier you were talking about, you don't really worry, but on the other hand, the amount of responsibility for this is enormous. I mean, do you ever feel the pressure, the responsibility? How, how do you handle as a human being <laughs> handling some of the biggest events in the world? How do you, and, and also it's televised, right? This, everyone's going to mm -hmm. see this to a certain degree. How do you handle that? Do you even feel the pressure anymore? Oh yeah, I think so. I think it's not so much for me, the pressure is not really a matter of, is it going to be great? It's a matter of, is it going to get done? Huh? You know, because that's the hardest part. I mean, for the Oscars, for example, you're you're on the fifth floor of Hollywood Highland in the center of of Hollywood. All the streets are blocked. There's very inadequate delivery area. You gotta take everything up through one elevator. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a million people all over the place, press, security. I mean, it's 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 a very, very difficult install. And we're dealing with always 
you know, I, I don't really think of it too much, but it is a perishable product. We are the last people. Food, uh, I guess food is a little bit out. Yeah. Wolfgang Puck has got to do the food and he's got to get that out a little later than us. But mm -hmm. we're dealing with something that can't be done. Like it's not like props and tables and things like that can be can be brought in early. We have to bring everything in at the last minute. So there is a, that pressure. And um, usually around Oscars, there are a lot of other parties too. So that to consider oh, you're also. you're doing several years. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we're talking about, I mean, the Oscars, celebrities, Hollywood, and here you are. You know, you, you've said also many celebrities are conscious of their images, obviously, and it's important to present them properly because they know their photos will become public. You know, they also want their privacy. And you sometimes, sometimes you do weddings for celebrities without your crew even knowing who the bride and the groom are. And so you keep in mind that you're often designing for unique photo opportunities, such as a cover for People magazine. Such an interesting position that you're in, too. Yeah. It, it, you know, when you do events and you do celebrity events, there is a, a whole nother layer of sort of things you have to consider. Like, uh, you know, if, it, if it's a Jessica Simpson wedding, uh -huh. you know that the bouquet is going to be on the cover of People, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. And I think I did two weddings for her and they were both on. Yeah. And you know that designing for the Golden Globes, this is all for television. It's got to be, the, it's, a, it's a sit down dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know that it has to be, I mean, the flowers add a lot, but it's really about the celebrities and you have to operate within a certain amount of space on that table and not block anybody. So you, you have to do that. So there are certain things that, well, we want to present ourselves well, but we want our events to look amazing also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What an, it, again, it's such an, I mean, I know you do all kinds of events and weddings, but what an interesting world that you inhabit as well is this whole Hollywood scene, the whole celebrity scene. I mean, I guess for now, this is just, it's day to day for you, but what is that like? like especially in the beginning, when you did your first Oscars, for example, mm -hmm. the governor's ball, mm -hmm. and you're surrounded by this group of people. I mean, what is that like for you? Well, I've never been very starstruck yeah. myself. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Uh -huh. I've met some really wonderful people, mm -hmm. and I've been able to do some amazing events and hopefully made them look like incredible events. Mm. But it doesn't scare me. I want to talk a little about weddings for a moment, too, mm -hmm. a little more. Again, this is something you said, uh, the dress, bouquet, and backdrop for the ceremony take careful thought and planning. So I wonder what your process is for weddings. Weddings in general, yeah. I mean, the, here, you know, I don't know if it's truer in Los Angeles, but weddings are a big, huge deal here. And they're very, uh, they're very choreographed. Mm. That's what I was saying a little earlier. They have all... There's a, quite a bit theatrical touch to the weddings here. Uh -huh. So we, when we design a wedding, obviously the first we have to involve ourselves with the wishes of the, the bride or whatever and try to go in that direction. But, you know, we're, we're designing for the space, the time of day, mm. the time of year. Is it indoors? Is it outdoors? Is it going to be 110 degrees? We have to take that into consideration. You know, are the flowers going to make it? What is the most important photo? It's the bride's bouquet is the most important. And the setting for the ceremony, what will be behind the bride in pictures is extremely important. And then what's on the tables for the, for the dinner. Millennials are more and more driving key decisions for any event, especially when it comes to the most impactful choice of all, the live musical entertainment. That's why Rhythm 6 has exploded on the international scene as the most energetic and talented band in the market. Supported by literally a team of seasoned event specialists, Rhythm 6 is the closest you'll get to a celebrity national act without paying celebrity pricing. Learn more about Rhythm 6 at theweddingbiz.com forward slash Rhythm 6 with the numeral 6. That's theweddingbiz.com forward slash Rhythm 6. Are you able to describe, again, any particular favorite that you did? You don't have to name the person, but... If you're able to describe to me visually what you did that personally really grabbed you. And now, again, I understand that 
that was then, you're going on. Mm -hmm. Is there still something or perhaps something you're working on now? Well, I think, you know, it's always fun to do different things. Mm -hmm. I remember Jessica Simpson's wedding a couple of years ago, maybe two, maybe three years now, mm -hmm. and I can't remember. Uh, it was mainly done in plants and hanging uh, delphinium upside down. It, wasn't, it, looked, it, it looked amazing. It was really mm -hmm. wonderful. And I love to work with her because she's such, uh, such a darling. So that just puts the icing on the cake. Yeah. You know? So something like that was unique. It was something we had never done before, something uh -huh. we wanted to play with. And it, it was also challenging you know so sometimes there is that element of is it going to work or isn't it yeah it did but it wouldn't necessarily have worked but it did yeah and i imagine that there have been some in all your years and events some outrageous challenges other than this one too that you've run into where it's like how do you handle in the moment I mean, I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm guessing correctly, but like an outdoor wedding, there, there could be so many things that go wrong at the last right. minute, not just weather, but all of that. Any story in particular, and also in general, how you handle in the moment, massive challenges. potential disasters. Yeah. I'm trying to find the right word. <laughs> yeah, we don't like, we don't like to call them disasters. Um, <laughs> you know, we really try to be super duper professional and super prepared, but there are things and weather is a huge, huge thing that which we have to deal with. Uh, in California and Los Angeles, people seem to want to get married outside. It's just like the well, everybody, destination everybody. weddings yeah. too, right? Yeah. It's all about yeah. that. It's all well see, destination is that could be a problem because you're dealing with that mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. I remember when we did Pink's wedding and talk about potential catastrophes, it was in Central America. Where was it? Was it in? I don't remember that. It was in one of the uh, Guatemala or I, no, okay. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but it was one of those things where all the flowers had to be shipped down there and well, we couldn't get the flowers. What do they you were held hostage <gasps> for, uh, we had to deliver a bag of money out <laughs> oh. to out a dirt road to oh, somebody. No, I'm not, I'm not kidding. There are people magazines there to photograph it. Everything oh. is, you know, well, we have to deliver a bag of money out to a gas station <laughs> out on a dirt road to get, to get the flowers. This sounds like so, an episode from Breaking Bad. Kind of. Yeah. 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 That was, that's one of those things that you don't expect. And then of course there's the, there the weather and there's rain. Yeah. You know? Oh, and masses amounts of humidity, right? right? Well, humidity isn't so bad for us. Okay. We don't mind humidity. We don't even mind a sprinkle. That's yeah. nice for the flowers, mm. but unsuspecting rain is not so good, mm -hmm. but you deal with it. Yeah. And I imagine you have, uh, I, I'm getting the impression you must have a real calm demeanor, like eat when this thing happens, like when that happened about the bag of money, I mean, what do you do? You got the people photographers waiting. You get the bag and you get Just the money. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to guess you weren't the one carrying the bags. Or? No, no. <laughs> Maybe some people with uh, packing some heat, as they say. <laughs> you know, you also talked about achieving, uh, somewhere I read, achieve new creative levels for every event. I'm getting the impression with you that this has got to be exciting, so exciting, right? To create whole new levels every time you, you go out there and do it. We try. You thrive off it, I imagine? I, If you want to keep things fresh, you have to try to reinvent yourself with every event that you do. Mm. I mean, you know, there are a lot of venues that are extremely popular here in Los Angeles. And I think we have less wedding venues than in New York, for example. So um, we do- Probably, yeah. We do a lot of the venues over and over again. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of try to make it ah, different. Yeah. So that's, that's always a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. One that you enjoy? Yeah, mm -hmm, I do. But you know, every season has its look a little bit. So after two years, it's a little tough. Like right now, everybody wants, we're just getting over white ivory and blush, uh -huh. you know, so and it's time to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I've heard that you have launched, in a sense, many people in the floral, you know, who have worked for you and then go on. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I feel fine about it. You know, I think people are going to do what they're going to do and they should have their opportunity to do it. You know, it's interesting. I had someone, I've got, I got a music business, pretty extensive, and I had a, a pretty major person for me that for various reasons had to move on. Mm -hmm. And 
I remember talking to someone actually here in Los Angeles, Andrea Michaels, Extraordinary Events. Sure, uh, I know her. And, yeah, and, and, and we talked about this with her. She's been around a long time. Right. And she had coincidentally just lost a very key like executive VP. And I was asking her about this very thing. She said something to me that changed my perspective forever. She said, Andy, the way I look at this is I'm training people to leave me. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, isn't it? I understand that. That makes that makes sense. And it's better to have a positive point of view on it because otherwise you'll just eat yourself up. You yeah. Know? So I think in our business, there's a opportunity for a lot of people here. Yeah. So, why not look at it that way, right? You know, plenty I mean, for everybody. I mean, yeah, yeah. We all have our different feel. I know some people that get super duper duper upset about stuff like that, and I think it it uh, is not good for your health. Yeah. So yeah. move on. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So how have you seen the industry change? Now, you personally have been one of the people that have changed the industry along the way. But looking back on it, how do you look back at this just incredible? I'm going to generalize this a little more. This just incredible career that you've had and you're still doing, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. How do you view it? Or again, are you only looking at, well, today is another day? No, I, th I think I've been in the business long enough <laughs> for sure to have seen a huge change in the flower business, the floral industry, whatever you want to call it here in the United States. And because there was a time, which I, I remember vaguely, when flower shops did not do great work. Mm. I mean, maybe a few did, but in general, people were, there was like, you could have a red rose or a pink rose. Maybe there would be a, th a third color option. Mm -hmm. You'd have iris, you'd have mums and carnations, and that was kind of it. And you had those those silly little one-sided arrangements. Why would you do two sides? Why would you pay for two sides when you're, you're only going to look at one at a time you know, mm. type thing? And then how long will it last? Well, I, I don't see much of that around anymore. Those kind of flowers that were the staple flowers at that period. Yeah. There's so much more that's being offered now and so many more varieties coming in from South America, from, mm. from Holland. So the material that we have to work with is so much richer than it was a few years ago. Mm. I think the public is so much more educated now. They are not looking for that old-fashioned look they're looking for new things and mm. new designs and not the three-cornered arrangement that fits on top the the television so i think that florists have educated the public and i think the public has responded i mean people love flowers i mean that just i mean maybe not everybody is so crazy about them but if they see something beautiful it can be life-changing really mm. men come into the shop sometimes and they're very they, they they go crazy about tropical flowers and interesting unusual things you know people come in to select flowers with their kids their kids will will pick flowers and put something together it, it's it's great. People in, I've had people say, you know, receiving flowers in the hospital that it helped them. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Just a couple more questions. Sure. I'm curious, what do you do for fun outside of the fun of this business? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I, Nowadays, I try to get away. I go to New York a lot. It's a place that I like to visit, and uh, I get a lot of inspiration there. In fact, I'm going, I think, in three weeks. And it will be beginning of December, and I want to do the the Christmas. But time. Rockefeller Center, yeah. or just the whole thing? I want to look at the. I want to look at the windows. I want to go to Rockefeller Center, uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. See, see what what's going on there. Yeah. And I love to do that. Uh, and I love the theater there. So I, I'm, I always book some shows ahead of time. I have a couple shows. I'm going to the opera. Ah, sounds wonderful. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's to me is a, is a getaway. It's something completely different. And I totally appreciate it. You know, it's, yeah, it's interesting when you say completely different. I love to travel in the sense, like going to different cultures, different places, even just for me, just coming here right. to LA. It's so refreshing every single time. Like at first I'm a little like, oh, I got to pack and I got to, you know, sure. deal with this and rental mm -hmm. car and driving around. But then I get this whole different perspective on my life and what's going on. I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really important. Mm -hmm. And how about balancing your personal life and your business life? 
I mean, I can't imagine with the amount of responsibility you have and running this business, the scale of it. Can you say something about balancing if you have balance? It just kind of all squishes together for me. I mean, because my partner and I always worked together Mm -hmm. until just recently. So there wasn't really anything to balance. It just kind of was all one, Mm. you know, so that wasn't ever, I don't think a problem. How was it for you that he retired? It's a little hard on things here. It's great to have some uh, support. I have an amazing team here and yeah. I've got great people and they handle uh, their own events. I mean, I, I've got Nancy Kay and, you know, Michael uh, Unkefer and uh, Christina Held. So I've got people that handle events pretty much on their own and, and they do an amazing job. Mm. So what is the best way for people to find out more about you? I, I know your website is Mark's Garden, and we'll put it in the show notes on the website version of the podcast. We'll have it in the show notes. Is that the best way? Other ways, Instagram, your, your handles? We are on Instagram. I don't know. You, what, don't, I don't, <laughs> this sounds, you sound like me right now. I, don't, I am so worthless when it comes to social media. You know, my team, I had to write it down and people ask me, I have to look it up. <laughs> you, seem, well, you seem so organized. And well, you say seem, you so uh, many, that's you the word. Cords. Seem. Yes, yes, I put in a lot of chords here to make me look very complicated yeah. and professional. All right, well, we'll put that in the, in the show notes. But Mark, I mean, again, I've heard so much about you. I really look forward to sitting down with you. So thank you for sharing your story and your thoughts. Well, thank you for... Uh, coming out here and uh, spending some time. Sure. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Mark as much as I enjoyed recording it. Be sure to check out the show notes at our website of theweddingbiz.com. That's theweddingbiz.com. And please, if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends and colleagues, share the show. That's how we help build our community. And any wonderful positive review that you can give us also helps new listeners find the show. So we'd appreciate that as well. And also be sure to listen to The Next Level, the segment following this in which Melissa and I, my co-host, tease out some of the highlights of the conversation and deliver it in really tactical strategies that you can use to build your business to the next level. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Our next guest is Mindy Weiss. Quite an interesting conversation. So join us next week. Please follow us on our social media platforms, especially Instagram at Wedding Biz Show. That's Wedding Biz Show. So take care. We'll talk to you next week.